what sacrifices were made for you to get where you are today? A lot, a lot of sacrifices. I remember in 2016 when I was working on the Telcom Netball League, I didn't have a car then, you know? So when you do netball um, with the league, you have game days on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And I didn't have a car. You have your post-match reactions and interviews and all of that. And then we drive from Pretoria back to Randburg. So that Randburg would get car rentals at Bidwest. That's where everyone gets their cars. So I remember during that year, during that netball season, I didn't have a car. So I had to sleep at the office because I live in Davidson and it wouldn't have made financial sense. And remember back then I was still starting out. So I obviously wasn't, you know, earning, yeah, like a decent income back then. You yeah, know? But, um, but I'm going to interrupt you there because there are people who are earning what you are earning. The first thing they did was buy a car. The first thing they did was move out of home. Yes. Um, flat run back somewhere, <laughs> young tall. But <laughs> still choosing to stay at D-Town, not having a car. Why? Yeah. And a lot of people are like, yo, Davidson is so far. Hi. It's on the other side of the world. Why don't you move closer to work? And I said, for me, it wouldn't make financial sense. One, because we always away, you know, we always working at Pulukwane or I'm in Toyando or I'm in Durban. And more than anything, I want to make my, I want to take care of my family because that's something that I've always wanted to do. My mom had always wanted to, to have like this big house. She's a domestic worker. There's no way she was going to be able to build, you know, her, herself a house. And it's something that I really wanted to do for her while she was still alive. And it's something that I promised her like a long time ago, one day, and she was like, I know, and it will happen, you know? So I kept saving and I kept saving and I didn't buy a car and I would sleep at the office. But luckily, because Super Sport is safe, I would use my excess card, you know, there's a gym there, so I'd shower there and on match day, meet everyone at Bid Rest Car Rental. So when I'm on TV, no one would actually see that, hey, this girl didn't sleep at home, you know? Um, yeah, so I just saved and saved and saved and saved. Because I don't really succumb to, to pressure. I, I really believe that I don't succumb to pressure in everything and anything that I do. I pace myself, you know? So it made sense for me then. So for me, that was, yeah, that, that's, that's basically me in a nutshell. I don't succumb to social media pressure or just, you know, society um, expectations in general. I do me and God does the rest. Talk to me about yeah. that, Lindy, about being a woman and not just a pretty face, especially in yes. football. Now you're a yeah. young girl, you've gone to IFM, you're in super sports, um, and the people are like, ah, I know, I got Kenny um, Yes. How do, you, how do you overcome that, uh, that, that some of those prejudices, especially as a means of advice for the younger, younger ladies that are coming up? Yeah. I always tell young girls, and this is something also um, Carol Shabalala once said to me, that you need to want it for the right reasons, you know? Musiwudi, sport isn't like entertainment. You can't cheat it. It's not like entertainment where you just quote a tweet and say, AKA tweeted this today, you know? Sports, you need to be invested. You need to be knowledgeable about it. You need to, to be passionate about it because you know how fans are. Like, yo, they'll come at you on Twitter and say, hi, Lindy, we're sorry. Are we watching the same game here, you know? So for women, <laughs> I, yeah, like, yeah, Lindy, sorry, which game are you watching? You know, like, <laughs> for women, yo, like, we have to double the efforts because whatever we do will always be questioned and scrutinized. Even when I won the Chairman's Award, a lot of people are like, why not, you know, why not this person? He just retired. Why not him? Who's this girl? You know, what did she do for football? And people don't understand that it, it's for for when I started and just the growth in the industry, you know, what I've shown and the work that I've been able to put in over the years from my days in the MDC, it's just sad that whenever our male counterparts, you know, do well, no one is going to say, ah, Musibudi Whitehead, you know, is a multi-award winning journalist. Uh, he deserves that kudos, whatever. But when it's a woman, it's like, why, why her? Who does she sleep with? You know, did she sleep with someone at the PSL or whatever, you know? So we always have to work twice as hard. How do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? Yes. Like, I know she's someone's girlfriend. How do you deal with it? I'm sure it must be difficult. Sometimes it must be hurtful. Yeah, but I think you sleep peacefully at night when you know that I didn't sleep with anyone, you know? When you know and when you are true to yourself. Um, yeah, as long as I sleep peacefully at night, my family knows me, you know, they know the type of person that I am. And also, you know yourself as an individual. If you slept your way up, then 
you, you obviously won't be resting, you know, peacefully at night. But if, you know, you put in the work, like, you know, you got in to YFM via auditions, via the Y Academy and at Supersport, you still had to audition, you know? Um, yeah, then so like I said, so knowing very well, you're putting in the work and you actually deserve to be there.